Does pasta make you go faster? Or does pasta make you fat? It's a really interesting question, a very controversial one. So I've got all of the carbs here today. I've got bread, carbs. I've got pasta makes you go faster or does it make you fat? Pasta, yummy in a bag. Gotta cook it first. I've got nuts, I've got cereal, wheat bix grape, a uh, form of carbohydrate. Why does carbohydrate get such a bad rap? And here's the first question. Do you like to eat carbohydrate? And it's a really interesting question because carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, which is what carbohydrate is, uh, if we put that into normal terminology, normal thinking, it would be, do you like to eat bread? Do you like to eat pasta? Do you like to eat potatoes? Do you like to eat nuts? Do you like to eat cereal? Do you like lollies? Do you like chocolate? Do you like ice cream? They're all foods that are high in CHO, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. If you don't like any of those foods, awesome, don't eat them. Isn't that fantastic? I can, I can never understand this. Can't have, don't have, mustn't have, shouldn't have. Uh, why, first of all, would you eat food that you don't like? But when somebody tells you that you can't have, mustn't have, shouldn't have, don't have, but you do like to eat it, what happens then? So if you are constantly hearing, I shouldn't eat too much carbohydrate, but you love bread and you love pasta and you love cereal, uh, then what do you do? Do you not eat it and get angry because you can't have it and get annoyed with life because you want to eat something that you can't have? Or do you eat it and then get angry and guilty and annoyed with yourself because you think you shouldn't have had it, but you did? And they're all the challenges that food can, can put into your headspace to affect your mental health. Now, I know that's a very controversial topic, but I don't want to do anything that screws with people's headspace. I would love people to love their food. And, if so, and I always ask the question, I've been a results coach, a personal exercise coach for well over 40 years now. And one of the questions that's really important to me is what do you love to eat? And let's never, let's always include that in your healthy eating plan. Let's never take it out. Because for me, food is not just about uh, for performance, for being healthy. It's about for pleasure, because for food for some people, I don't know about you, but I love to eat food. And for some people, food is a major beautiful experience in their life. So if you say to them, you can't eat bread and they love to eat bread, then what does that do to their mental health? Which is a really interesting topic when it comes to food, of course, because should food be uh, creating a, a body for us that is a high performance machine that makes us feel good mentally and physically, or do we want to screw up with people, screw, screw around with people's headspace and make them angry because they can't have the foods that they want? So, ha, what if we change the, the question rather than should I eat carbs or are carbs good for me? What if you had a body that everything you ate got burnt up quickly? So whether it was carbohydrate, protein, fat, lollies, chocolate, biscuits, bread, pasta, meat, cheese, yogurt, doesn't matter. What if your body just burnt up everything that you put into it? Which is why as a personal exercise coach, I like to focus on not on food. Because food is such a controversial topic for lots of different reasons, yeah? Uh, could it be a, an ethical reason that people don't eat a certain food? Could it be a religious reason? Could it be a personal bad experience they've had in their life where something's happened and that particular food reminds them of that bad experience? So I don't ever want to tell somebody what to eat, ever. I always ask, what do you like to eat? Let's always include that. What don't you like to eat? Let's never include that. And then let's find out what's going to give you the best performance for what it is that you want to do. So this great question, which is if you were your own high performance eating coach, what advice would you give yourself? And that's a question that I always ask because most people, in fact, I've never had somebody who said to me, I should eat lollies, chocolate, takeaway food, uh, chips, uh, take drugs, drink alcohol, and don't do any, any activity. No one's ever said that to me. It's the reverse. When I ask that question, if you were your own high performance eating coach, what advice would you give yourself? I get usually the right answer. And I might not agree with the answer, but who cares? Because that person needs to do what's best for them. And you know your body better than anybody. Would that be fair? If somebody told me what to eat, and I always ask this question, how do you know what Rowie eats? And people think that they know because I'm a personal exercise coach, but nobody knows what I eat because I don't tell anybody what I eat. Who cares what Rowie eats? 
What's important is that you have four things happening in your life and I think we should be able to demand this from our eating and exercise plan. So for, and we'll just focus on food for a minute. Whatever you're eating, should it give you a stack of energy? Should it make sure that you perform at your best? Should you love what you see in the mirror and love the way your body feels when you touch your body? And should you be getting the results that you want from your eating and exercise plan? But let's just say it's only eating. So if you have a stack of energy, if you're performing at your best, if you love what you see in the mirror, you love how your body feels and you are getting the results that you want from your eating plan, who am I to tell you to eat differently? That would be so disrespectful and so rude and I would never do that. If the answer is no to any of those questions, which is no, I'm not performing at my best, no, I don't have a stack of energy, or no, I don't like what I see in the mirror, and no, I'm not getting the results that I want from my eating and exercise plan, then my question again would be, what do you think you need to do? What, what are you prepared to change? What do you think you should do? Now, some people will say, I think I should stop eating carbs. And I always ask why. And it seems that the answer of late is that, oh, well, everybody says that carbs are bad for you. So I'm going to go back to my very important question, which is if you had a body that burnt up everything that you put in it, into it, including lollies and chocolate and biscuits and cake and takeaway food and alcohol, then it would, would it matter? Because again, should you be able to say, I have a stack of energy, I perform at my best, I love what I see in the mirror, I'm getting the results that I want. So here's the question, if you're really fit and strong, really the fittest you can possibly be and the strongest you can be, there's some things that are gonna happen there. Number one, you're gonna have a fast metabolism. So your base metabolic rate, which is how many calories you burn at rest in a warm room, that's gonna be high because you're strong, because you've maintained your muscle or if you're a bloke, you've built more muscle, you're gonna have a high base metabolic rate. So the calories that your body needs just to exist will be a large number. Then if you are constantly injecting high intense activity into your day and because you are fit and strong you move faster and you're more active and you've got a stack of energy so you're constantly burning calories faster in the day uh, that happens from being fit and strong so fast base metabolic rate fast metabolic rate and then if you're fit and strong this fantastic thing happens to the kind of calories that you burn as you know we have a respiratory quotient respiratory quotient depending on how you say it which is the terminology of where are the calories coming from. So if I'm standing here chatting, which means I'm technically not doing anything physical, versus if I'm sprinting, versus if I'm lifting heavy, versus if I'm using my brain, where are the calories coming from? So I'm gonna burn a certain number of calories at any particular time, and that changes throughout the day, but what kind of calories am I burning? And if you understand your anatomy and physiology, the energy systems of the body, there's the phosphate system, the lactate system, and the aerobic system. And very quick overview, in the phosphate system, I'm using stored phosphates, it's a 10 second burst of activity, 100% effort. Uh, I have to use instant energy, and that's, that's my favorite energy system because that's where we get 100% result because we're working at 100% effort. Once you go past 10 seconds, you go into the lactate system, so 10 seconds to two minutes. The energy source used is stored carbohydrate glycogen. Stored carbohydrate, CHO, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Your body can only store half a kilo of carbohydrate. So this thing about carbs make, makes you fat, the stuff that sits between your skin and your muscle is not carbohydrate, it's fat. <laughs> uh, if you eat too much carbohydrate and your stores are full, can your body turn carbohydrate into fat? Yes, it does. It's a very long, slow process. It takes a lot of calories. The energy, it requires a lot of calories, a lot of energy to turn carbohydrate into fat. But yes, your body will do it if you keep overfeeding yourself with carbohydrate. But there's my great question. If I'm burning the carbohydrate up before it has a chance to turn into fat, then I can't get fat from carbohydrate. Isn't that exciting? So the lactate system, which is uh, uh, 10 seconds through to two minutes, which is high intense activity still, uh, that burns carbohydrate. After that, I'm in the aerobic system. So after two minutes, I'm burning a combination of carbohydrate and fat and a little bit of protein. And that's what we burn when we're sitting, when we're sleeping, when we're reading, when we're working, when all the things that we're doing that aren't high intense activity between the phosphate system 10 seconds and then 10 seconds to two minutes in the lactate system. So wouldn't it be awesome if while you were in the aerobic system, which is most of the time for most people, and for all of us, nobody ever, out of 24 hours, the most time that we spend in any energy system is in the aerobic system. 
Wouldn't it be awesome if your body preferred to burn fat while it was in that system? Uh, and isn't that exciting that your body does? Because when you're really fit and if your body knows you're going to be constantly requiring a large amount of energy to do high intense activity, lifting, puffing, your body says, and I'm not sure it talks like in English like this, but this is basically what happens, this is how the hormonal system works. This woman, this person, they're constantly requiring high intense activity energy. So they're in the phosphate system or the lactate system and they need this carbohydrate for energy. So we want to store this half a kilo of carbohydrate. We don't want to be using that for just daily living, not when we've got fat cells that can keep expanding. We've got 40 to 50 billion fat cells. No, I didn't count them. Somebody shared with us that that's apparently how many we have. And those little buggers can keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And when they get bigger and bigger, they split and you can make more. And then they get bigger and bigger. We have an unlimited fat storage. I don't want to fill up my fat stores, how about you? I want my fat cells to remain empty, like a balloon. I would like my balloons to be flat, not filled up with fat. Balloons to be fat, flat, not filled up with fat. That sounds awesome. So the way to do that is to make sure that your body prefers to burn fat when you're resting, when you're in the aerobic system. So it's never 100% fat, but wouldn't it be nice if that percentage changed so that you were always burning a high percentage of fat when you were not doing high bursts of intense activity or you weren't in your lactate system. And for me, that's why I love to be able to say this. When you're fit and strong, eat when you're hungry because your body tells you that you're hungry. Stop eating when you're full because your body tells you that you're full. You can't overeat when you're fit and strong because your body tells you stop it, I'm full. It doesn't matter, I love bread, it's one of my favorite things, but I can eat two, three pieces of bread and then I'm full. I don't want to eat the whole packet of bread. Now I know that sounds funny because most people don't, uh, oh, I can't wait to eat a whole packet of bread. Just as a fun side note, this, uh, this Vogel toast is thin toast. Uh, and I'm not sure why it was cut into, it's like half toast size. Uh, and I love this bread because uh, when you put it in the toaster, it goes really crunchy. If there was one food on the planet that I, if there was nothing else to eat, I would be happy to eat bread. And here's why. Because I like to have the energy to do high intense activity. So I want to have full carbohydrate stores. But I love having a body that burns up whatever I put into it. So I don't think about, oh, I want to have bread or I want to have pasta or I want to have lollies or I want to have chocolate or I want to eat cereal or I want to eat meat or I want to eat yogurt or I want to have nuts or I want to eat fruit. I just listen to my body. And is it possible that when you have a fit, strong body, your endocrine system's working, your central nervous system's working, everything's on fire, again, your body will tell you when you're hungry, it'll tell you to stop eating when you're full. It'll tell you when you're thirsty, it'll tell you to stop drinking because you're not thirsty anymore. It'll tell you to go to sleep because you're tired, it'll tell you that you, your body needs to get back to high performance, which is, I believe, what homeostasis actually is. Your body in peak physical condition and peak mental condition so you can live your life to the max. So this thing about carbs are bad or fat's bad or protein's bad, well, they're the macronutrients. That's what your body uses to live on. In that aerobic system, you use a percentage of fat, a percentage of carbohydrate, and a percentage of protein, a little bit of protein. Wouldn't it be awesome to turn that part of your life, which is most of your life, into a fat-burning machine where your body prefers to burn fat? And of course, that's what happens when you get fit and when you get strong. So then there's no can't have, mustn't have, don't have, shouldn't have, can't eat carbs because they're bad, can't have lollies because they're sugar, can't drink alcohol because it's a toxin, shouldn't drink coffee because it's bad for you. All the things that you hear, can't have, mustn't have, don't have, shouldn't have, that all goes away because you have a body that burns everything up. So I'm going to ask the four questions again. Your eating plan, does it give you a stack of energy? Does it help you perform at your absolute best at everything that you do? Exercise, work, relationships, everything that you do. Do you love what you see in the mirror? And do you love the way your body feels when you touch it? And are you getting the results that you want? If the answer is yes, please keep doing what you're doing and don't let anybody tell you what you can and can't have. Wouldn't that be awesome? Just keep doing what you're doing. If you say no to any of those or all of those, no, I don't have a stack of energy, no, I'm not performing at my best, no, I don't like what I see in the mirror, and no, I'm not getting the results that I want, then it's obviously time to make a change. But shouldn't you be the person that makes the decision about the change? If you don't like eating bread or pasta, don't eat it. If you do love eating bread or pasta, why would you let somebody say to you, you can't eat carbon, hydrogen, oxygen? 
that's what carbohydrate is. That's what fat is too, by the way. I don't know why it got the, the name FAT, because fat's made of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Protein's made of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen. When you, when you put it down to the basics, the macronutrition that your body needs to survive, and I'll always use this example, if you think that carbs are bad, if you think bread's bad, if you think that pasta's bad, I've got nuts and cereal behind me, if you think that carbs are bad, if you are out in the desert and you're about to die because you've had no food for weeks on end and you came across a bag of Vogel toast and you ate that, is it possible that that bread that everyone says is bad, that's the reason you would stay alive? Wouldn't you call that a superfood now? This superfood stopped me from dying. Now you could replace that with a bag of sugar, a bag of pasta, a bag of rice, a bag of lollies, a bag of chocolate, doesn't matter. Food, macronutrition, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, they're the things designed to make sure that we don't die. Now micronutrition, which is our vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals and fibre, that's where the performance comes from, that's where the great hair, great skin, great nails comes from. But all of that works effectively and your body will tell you exactly what you need when you're fit and strong and you have an endocrine hormonal system that's working effectively. If you're unfit and weak and frail and if your endocrine system is busted, then those things won't work properly. So what if we focus on get fit, get strong, get healthy and then your body, your food, your appetite, everything will work itself out. So much easier than telling people can't have, mustn't have, don't have, shouldn't have. And I would never do that. You obviously can do whatever you want to, but I don't want to be disrespectful. I don't want to tell somebody you can't have and then screw with their mental health. So I would love everybody to sing like I do every day. Super duper do, how are you? I am simply amazing, because I eat what I bloody well want and I feel fantastic all the time. Woohoo!